Hello, lovely friend. I am Dr. Mary Barson. And I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. And this is The The Real Real Health and and Weight Loss Podcast. Podcast. Hello, lovelies. We are super excited to be bringing you this series in menopause where we're interviewing guests on their expert subject regarding perimenopause, menopause, and beyond. As always, any information in this podcast is just considered general advice, and we would urge you to seek medical attention if you have any concerns about your health. If you're interested in exploring the symptoms of menopause or perimenopause, we have a checklist which you can download at our website, rlmedicine.com forward slash checklist, or as always, you can click the link in the show notes. Thanks, lovelies. Enjoy this series. Hello, lovely friend. How are you? This week, we're back. We're back with part two of a fabulous conversation I'm having with Dr. Sunita Chelva, who, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, maybe run back and listen to that because this is part two of that conversation. Last week, we talked about musculoskeletal, uh, muscular health around the perimenopause and menopause phase and beyond. And today, we're really diving into bone health. Sunita, welcome back. Oh, thank you for having me again. Ah, we well, a lovely chat. I know. Um, it was such a good conversation. And I know that initially we were going to fit, pack it all into one, but honestly, there was no way we could do that. So I'm so glad that you could come back for part two um, of the musculoskeletal syndrome of menopause. And uh, I think that last week, as we talked about, was all around the muscles, but today we're talking all around the bones. That's right. And you can't separate them all out necessarily Mm -hmm. and a lot of the things that we've talked about last week will apply to what we're talking about here in terms of bone health but bones are supremely important i mean we again we don't think about them we Mm. don't think about it osteoporosis is one of the most important things as we age so from menopause onwards um It's defined as the breakdown of the bony matrix of the internal scaffolding of our bone architecture. So it literally means porous bones, osteoporosis. Mm. It is a silent disease and it has devastating consequences. Um, Hip fractures result in 20% morbidity in the years after having one. Um, that's more so, so what does that, can you just explain what that sentence means for our so listeners? Hip, so breaking your hip yep. results in 20% um, of women will have terrible impacts in their life that involves more time spent in hospital mm. uh, than some cancers and or even after having a heart attack. Wow. Yet we don't actually focus on preventing fractures. Mm. We don't screen for it. No. Um, A lot of my patients, actually, I just want to say, a lot of my patients get confused between osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. Ah. Osteoarthritis is wear and tear of our joint surfaces. Now, the loss of our joint surfaces in osteoarthritis is also under hormonal influence and genetic Mm -hmm. factors Mm -hmm. and very common around menopause, Mm -hmm. but the terms are confusing. Today we're talking about osteoporosis. Yep. So that's sort of, um, I think it did, people used to call it thinning of the bones, which isn't quite the right term either, is it? Not quite, no. But it sort of describes that sort of, loss of the architecture and strength really of our bones one of the um um, one of the visuals i like to use that is i think helpful is that thinking about you know when people build a house and they pour a slab uh, of concrete in that slab is the the rio i think it's called that sort of wire yes um, reinforcement i guess that's why it's called rio and um that's the reinforcement then you pour the concrete around it So I kind of think that the bone matrix is a bit like the Rio. It is. Or it's a bit like a honeycomb. Yeah. Sort of a structure that 
Yeah, there's lots going on inside that bone. Our bones are living tissue like muscles, as we said. They've got special cells, all of which have special, um, they all have special processes and um, jobs, really. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> they all have special jobs. So there's cells um, known as osteoblasts, which build up, build up our bone. There's bones, there's bony cells known as osteoclasts, which break down bone. Um, they're all modulated by osteocytes. Yeah. And we build bone, Lucy, from early childhood to early adulthood. And then it peaks, our bone density peaks around the age of 30. Yep. And it declines steadily from there. Mm. And particularly precipitously in this perimenopausal era to menopause. Yep. And yeah. all of the special cells are all under the influence of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and they all respond uniquely to each of these. Right. Right. So estrogen really is good at preventing bone breakdown and actually helps create bone formation. And progesterone also helps to regulate skeletal growth. It's really interesting that women who are still having their periods, I learned this in my research of, um, for our talk, that uh, women still having periods in their luteal phase, so the second half of their menstrual cycle, when the progesterone is higher, actually tend to form more bone. They build right. more bone. Mm. Fascinating. But obviously when you lose your cycle, you're not doing that anymore. No. no. Testosterone is another thing that we haven't really talked about, but that really is important for bone formation as well. But we haven't got a lot of studies on this, but it's in the pipeline, I believe. Yeah, which, I mean, because that's one of the interesting things is the difference in osteoporosis rates between men and women. Very. Women, as we hit menopause, um, we lose around 10% of our body mass in five mm. years. Mm. One in three women have had a fracture related to osteoporosis at the age of 50. Yeah. And one in two, so that means you or me, yeah, <laughs> Lucy, um, will have a fragility fracture. So that's like we talked about, the hip fracture, yeah. the spinal fracture. Yeah. Just for minimal trauma. That's yes. alarming to me. That's terrifying to me. And that's quite young. I mean, given that our average age of living is 85.1 years or something, I think, in Australia, you know, having a fragility fracture is no laughing matter. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, we've we've coined this phrase recently called the glory years, which is the bit, you know, the third, the last third of your life so you've got your first third I kind of look and go well during that first third you're growing you're you know establishing your identity you're sorting yourself out you might start a little bit of reproduction <laughs> maybe second third you're still potentially reproducing if you're having children or not but you're you know you're working you're um you know you're the the mum taxi you're the you're doing all the things you're and then doing the, the mum juggle yeah then the last third is really when you're kind of meant to be able to reap the rewards of all your hard work where maybe you might you still might be working but you potentially don't have to work quite as much. You've got, you yeah. know, maybe more time to holiday, more time to just spend, you know, maybe you've got grandchildren. Yeah, you're travelling, you're catching up with friends, unless, of course, you're spending all your time in hospital getting your hip fractures sorted. That's right. And, I mean, 20 to 30% of people who have a hip fracture die within a year yeah and for those who actually do survive there's a lot of pain there's a lot of disability there's impact on mental health and not to mention you know dvts so clots mm. urinary tract infections urosepsis mm. and there's this cascade effect that we do see with people who have osteoporosis um osteoporotic fractures rather who if you have one mm. you're more likely to have another one and Indeed. so on and so forth. And that actually applies to women who have, you know, even wrist fractures, so falling yeah. over, tripping on a pavement yes. from your height, falling over and breaking your wrist, you're more likely to have other more significant fractures going forward. Yeah, and I think it's interesting, isn't it, that we 
almost sort of tolerate wrist fractures as an, as being inevitable. Oh, well, you fell over, so of course you mm-hmm. broke your wrist. But Inconvenient. I mean, yeah, yeah, but people who are 20 fall over and don't break a wrist. They shouldn't. No, no. <laughs> they shouldn't. If they, and so why then would somebody who's 50 break a wrist unless they've got osteoporosis or osteopenia? And, in fact, that was one of my questions. If you could yes. explain the difference between osteopenia and osteoporosis. Yes. So osteopenia is just low bone density or weakened bones. Osteoporosis is actually, I mean, by definition, having a minimal trauma fracture. Mm -hmm. But really these terminologies come about through bone density measurement. So we have this thing known as a DEXA scan. It's a very simple, low radiation scan which looks at bone density in sample areas. So in our lumbar spine, in our hip, our femoral neck of our femur or Mm -hmm. our wrist. It gives a T-score, which is a measurement of bone density compared to other aged matched individuals. So zero to minus one is considered normal bone density. Mm -hmm. Minus one to minus 2.5 is classed as osteopenia low yep. bone density and greater than minus 2.5 is classed as osteoporosis and so depending on you know you can't we can't look at someone as a clinician and say you know i know what's going on <laughs> you've got a very you know you've got I mean, sometimes we can we're sort of hunched over yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's often missed and um You know, I have had quite a few women coming into HERA in their 40s with T-scores of minus four, so something that you would expect Ah. to see in an 80 or 90-year-old. Right. Never guess by looking at them. They would be, you know, they'd look like the picture of health. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this is why it's extremely important to consider asking for a DEXA scan from your GP for this reason. Perimenopause, actually, um, you know, Medicare doesn't cover DEXA scans until a, a woman is over 70 or has a minimal trauma fracture. So that's those fractures we talked about. Yeah. Coughing and breaking a rib, tripping over and breaking your wrist. It's too late by then, but in perimenopause, yeah. you, know, you know, it can last quite long from four months to 10 years. Studies have actually shown that there is escalated bone loss through that period as well. It's not just that one day of menopause that suddenly everything goes down. Yeah, It's it's bubbling away probably, as we said, from our 30s. And so it makes a case for us to really start screening for this earlier. Way earlier than 70 by the sounds of things. And it's not just hormonal, as we said. It's not always just about hormones some women we would classify like those women i talked about who've got t-scores of minus four they're very rapid um, losers of bone and that's a genetically determined thing Mm. Um, obviously aging reduced physical activity change in metabolic health same as muscles it also impacts poor nutrition if you've been on steroids for a long period of time if you have an autoimmune or thyroid disease Smoking, drinking, even drinking two units of alcohol regularly will impact your bones. Mm. Um, A lot of women are on um, SSRI antidepressants and Mm. they're readily prescribed at this age. Um, You know, a lot of GPs are very reluctant post-WHI to actually prescribe HRT. SSRI antidepressants have shown to have a significant impact on bone density and it's not often considered, considered at all. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, which is wow. interesting to think about. Um, you know, the Olympics are on at the moment, yes. Lucy, and a lot of these supreme athletes, the gymnasts, will have quite suppressed hormonal profiles. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these women, by virtue of overexercising, perhaps have eating disorders, Some women Mm -hmm. actually have primary ovarian failure or early menopause, so that's Mm -hmm. losing all of your hormones younger than the age of 40. Yep. That can have a huge impact on where a woman reaches her peak bone density, and these women need to be screened early particularly. Yeah. 
my um, daughter has celiac disease and she got screened um, as a 20-year-old 20, 20 because right. I, we have no idea how long she'd had it for. She was one of those asymptomatic people who didn't yeah. have any gut symptoms, just wow. had mm, prolonged um, iron deficiency. So, yeah, but, yeah, her gastroenterologist is completely onto it and, yeah, yeah. She's, she'll have regular screens now. So I, as a GP, I reflect back now on how poorly I understood uh, menopause health and probably the number of women that I dismissed, even though I considered yes. myself pretty patient-centric. Um, so many things I now think about where I'd go, oh, my God, oh, around everything, around, you know, Absolutely. health metabolic health, no yes. osteoporosis, how many yes. people uh, didn't screen, so many things. So true. And and by virtue of the fact that it wasn't taught, it wasn't yeah. talked about, I feel like we've missed out on 20 years of really being preemptive um, about women's health particularly. Um, yeah. You know, it's good that we're talking about it now, but I agree. I shudder when I think about the number of women that I haven't actually looked at through this lens. Yeah, absolutely. So what what would your advice be to say, let's say you're a woman who maybe, let's say you're in your 60s, um, mm -hmm. so, and you've just been told that you've got osteopenia. What, what would you, what would you advise them? Well, it depends, um, I guess, coming in to see me, whether they um, have, I normally would look at the menopause side of things as well. Sure, yeah. Um, but let's talk about first, what would we do in terms of diet, exercise and lifestyle modification? Um, because these are really, really important alongside that. Mm -hmm. So diet, um, you know, getting vitamin D, Mm. either from sun exposure or from supplementation. I mean, we I don't like supplementation for no reason. It has to mm. be guided by a blood test. Depends on the individual need. I mean, someone with darker skin like me, Lucy, is not going to absorb sun as well as you are. No. Calcium, calcium from the diet is really important. Diet, you know, we always say from the diet as opposed to supplementing, but nuts and vegetables, um, yep. dairy, of course, but... You know, if you really aren't having those things, then maybe supplementation carefully. Vitamin D and calcium. I mean, a lot of my patients say, um, oh, I've got osteopenia. It's okay. I'm on vitamin D and calcium. It's okay. But we know, I mean, even from that bad old WHI study, they did show that w, that vitamin D and calcium alone are really not good enough for fracture no. prevention. So they help with bone maintenance. They're important overall for lots of other reasons but they're not going to prevent, prevent your fractures. Yep. Cutting down on alcohol and smoking is really important for bone health. Mm. Um, and as we said before, eating protein, eating lots of green leafy veggies, adding to our diets is really, mm. really important. Exercise is superbly important and, once again, heavy resistance and high-impact training has been shown to really make a difference. Um, there have been some trials, the Lift More trials in Queensland, which you've probably heard about, which have mm -hmm. shown that high impact, high resistance training is very effective in stimulating bone growth, mm. particularly in women who've got osteoporosis and osteopenia. There's a special program um, called O-Neuro, which you know, came out oh, from yeah. this study. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually seek out specific exercise physiologists and, and physios who can help you deliver that, you know, into your everyday practice. Mm. Um, as we said before, it's not about bulking up. It's about strengthening what we have. And certainly a specific targeted training regime, um, starting small, can yes. really make a difference to our bones and can actually improve bone density. Mm. We can see that on a DEXA scan. So it's definitely worthwhile doing it. Even if you're jumping off a step 10 times. Yes. 
That's enough impact every day. So if you're playing tennis or playing netball, you're going to be doing it. And starting these practices early, teaching our daughters, teaching our young women, do it from your 20s, do it from even before. Yeah. Um, it's never too late to start changing, remodeling our bones and our muscles. They're all dynamic tissues. Um, yeah. HRT is an extremely effective treatment for osteopenia and osteoporosis. Mm. And it is actually, um, you know, a preventative and a treatment for fractures as well. And it's better than any of the weapons grade medication. One of my colleagues here, an endocrinologist, loves to call all the other medications the weapons grade medications. Um, yeah, they're pretty a, intense, some of them. Oh, they're very intense. I mean, there's just, you know, quickly there's bisphosphonates. You may have heard about them. They prevent bone breakdown. There's an injection that you have every six months, prolia. There's all sorts of medications that are out there that, you know, in certain cases will need to be used. But when you stop them, your bone density slides back down again. Uh, and prolia has, you know, that risk of vertebral fractures if you are late. Rebound even. fractures. Yeah. Yeah, which is really scary. And a lot of people are not on, not aware of it not aware of it at all um and you know if we're talking about women so this woman is 60 with osteopenia mm. she as we said might live till mm. 85 you don't mm. really necessarily want to be on these big guns for 20 years no <laughs> there is hormone replacement therapy got other symptoms as we said and we'll say it again if it means you sleep better you feel better you have more energy mm. um, more likely to go out and address your diet, pay attention to your exercise, optimise those things, the flow and effect on your bones will also come from there. But the, they themselves, HRT, will treat osteopenia and osteoporosis and prevent that slide further. Yeah. So very, very useful. The benefits, and nowadays we know that they can be taken for as long as the benefits outweigh the risks, even for women who have osteopenia. Yep. Um, it's it's likely to be extremely, extremely useful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we, again, getting back to the glory years, we, medicine is very good at keeping people alive for a long time now. We're pretty, we're pretty good at that. But there's not many of our medications that really improve the quality of your life or the health span of your life. So things like you know, MHT again for bone muscle health as as a as a quality of life component, not just for yes. the perimenopause phase, but beyond, is Correct. really really important. Absolutely, living. I mean, I think a lot of my patients and I have the conversation that you could be taken out by a bus tomorrow. You could, you know, mm. something could happen. You have to do the best you can with what you have. And you might yeah. as well live with quality. Some of my post breast cancer patients will also have these discussions with because we live longer, we are going to be mm. having diseases, you know, experiencing cancers and um, living with quality and optimizing everything that we can. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is the goal. Yeah. So, which I guess then brings me to the next point, which is the people that um, can't take HRT or don't want to take out HRT or for whatever reason, mm. the things that they need to focus then come back to those basics by the sounds of things. Always. Yeah. I think whether you take HRT or not, yeah. those basics have to be in place. Yeah. It's only part of the picture. It's got yes. to be all of it. And, and I, I think you, I mean, you mentioned just doing some jumping. This would be I reckon the thing that people don't have any idea about, you know, jump that jumping, a little jump. Yeah, off a step. Yeah. And you right. can, even if that feels a bit scary, you can just start again in the kitchen, holding onto your bench and just do one little jump and see how you feel. That's right. There's this fear of injury. I don't know yeah. why, that we've always been taught, you know, pain is bad, injury is dangerous. Um, we need to wrap ourselves in cotton wool. Yeah. <laughs> um, humans are amazing and we can do amazing things and we can recover from amazing things, but we don't have to be afraid um, of doing things. And getting back to that inner child um, yeah. is actually quite 
um, enlightening, I think, to to allow yourself to be able to do that. I think um, don't be afraid of the fact that you might pull up a bit sore or yeah. you might feel a bit weak, but it will get better. Yes, yes. Find yourself, I think, is, is a big message. I think um, probably... You know, for lots of people I know around that age, that 60-year-old age, they've got osteoarthritis in their knees. Uh, maybe they've had joint replacements even by now yes. and they yes. are scared of impact. Yes. Yeah. So, right. again, you, you, don't, you don't need to fear impact. You just need to do it slowly. Do it slowly and build on that. Mm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go out jumping. You know, don't don't buy a skipping rope and jump 500 things if you haven't jumped once. That's right. That's yeah. right. I agree. So some impact is going to be helpful. We're going to, you know, if anyone's smoking, hopefully you're not doing that by now, reducing <laughs> alcohol. Um, any thoughts on coffee? Well, coffee, poor old contentious coffee <laughs> is, um, you know, like... For many reasons, I think it needs to be in moderation. Yep. Um, the effect of caffeine has been shown to be beneficial for metabolism. I think that excessive amounts may have an effect on bone density, similarly mm. on kidney function, um, and uh, just needs to be kept in moderation. I think any of our practices, any of our little vices that we covet and we overdo um, needs to be pared back because it, it, yeah, it certainly can have an impact yeah. on um, bone health as far as I'm aware. What, what are your mm. thoughts? <laughs> yeah, pretty much the same. I think that, you know, unlike, say, smoking where there is zero benefit of any amount, and honestly I'd also say alcohol alcohol the alcohol industry have done a great job of convincing us that certain a small amount of alcohol is helpful to your health i don't think it's helpful i think, it's I think probably, that's, that notion's gone out the window yeah. yeah it's still pretty um entrenched in the community that you know drinking red wine daily is good for your health mm -hmm. it's not uh i think though that some caffeine as you mentioned does have some health benefits in you know in a in a measured amount but like everything, like anything we do, too much of a good thing becomes harmful. You know, too much water can be harmful. Too much oxygen, yes. we know that is harmful. Yes. So too much caffeine makes sense then. So if you're drinking eight cups a day, you probably need to cut down. And I, I would say really try and aim for, you know, two, max three a day. And uh, probably closer to two. I'm just looking at <laughs> I probably drink three some days, but oh, no. yeah. Sometimes but it's necessary. <laughs> the thing that I also do, and I and you know, this is a completely separate topic, but obviously keeping the majority of your caffeine before midday. Before will, midday, absolutely. yeah, help you sleep. Sleep is so important, and sleep is restorative for all of these amazing cells in our muscles and our bones as well, and recovery from whatever we're doing. That's. You know, yeah, you in fact, yeah, that's a great, it's, yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right. It's a great segue. I didn't even realise I'd done one. But you're right because yeah. part of this whole muscle development, bone health is that the rest phase, the bed, you know, the it's sleeping just as phase. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good point, good we point. We talked about in our first um, episode that we have a basal metabolic rate. Well, that's yes. important. <laughs> We're yes. doing things even though we are just sitting there as well. So what yeah. you do in your activity phase is also helping your restorative phase. So, yes, um, yeah, absolutely. We um, <laughs> we have coined another little phrase because you know lots of people don't like going to bed, particularly women who have been working yes. and running around all day, and it's like your sacred time, and it's the only oh, time I'm when nobody's. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is our little hack for that. Is we have changed the. It's not called your bed. It's called your rejuvenation palace. Mm, yes. And yep. you go and imagine, imagine how much you would pay to go to a rejuvenation palace where you just lie back and all these things, you, you know, your muscles are repaired, your bones are repaired, your memories are enhanced, your learning is, um, you know, catapulted <laughs> 10x. All yeah. of these incredible things happen. You'd pay a fortune. And all That's you right. have to do 
is go the hell to bed. That's right. <laughs> and that's why I often say that conversely, sleep deprivation is torture. Yes. So if we can just focus on that. Yes. Um, yes. Sleep wow. deprivation is the equivalent of, uh, you know, if, if anybody who's still working, if you're like, you know, if you're working in public hospitals, you will know that concept where they've told you you have to do more work with less resources. Yeah. That's, that's right. basically what the brain says. Every time you deprive yes. it of sleep, during that time, you're actually giving it more to do. That's right. And it's compounding. <laughs> indeed. So, indeed. It's just compounding. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I love this. So summary for our beautiful listeners, if uh, to improve your bone health, obviously start early. The earlier you start, the better. But doing something is better than doing nothing. So start even with a tiny little jump. Just one little jump by the kitchen bench will start you on that impact for your bone strength. Strengthening your muscles is still is part of bone health, part of that whole musculoskeletal system obviously you know food alcohol is helpful and and important and we want to if if you're using hrt will be helpful it will be absolutely helpful and so if you know you're at all on the fence thinking i don't know if i really want to use it we'll look at all of the benefits in their entirety absolutely it's never too late to start either i think that's you know you haven't missed the boat you might have low bone density. You yes. might have the beginnings of sarcopenia, but you can do something about it now. Yes. And just consciously think about it in all your daily chores and your, um, you know, what, what you do, even in the car, you, there's things that you can do and be aware of. Absolutely. I love this. Sunita, if people want to follow you or connect with you, what, where can they go? Where can they go? Well, they can uh, certainly go to our website at mm-hmm. heromenopause.com.au. They can find us on Instagram at heromenopause. We're also on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, you're welcome to email us. Uh, come and visit us at Hera. We'd love to meet you. And Wonderful. Um, we love midlife medicine. We're passionate about preventative health and ageing well. Mm. Um, living life with quality because that's what's life. Life is a very precious entity and that's what life is about. Ultimately. Yes. And making those glory years glorious. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that sentiment, Lucy. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, we will have all of the links to Sunita in the show notes. And uh, so if, you, uh, if you're driving and you're thinking, oh, my God, I can't remember what she said, just go to the show notes at the end and click on the links and you'll be taken to her website. Dr. Sunita Chelva, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. It has been an absolute pleasure and you have been a wealth of information. Thank you, Lucy. The pleasure has been all mine and I look forward to hearing some more podcasts from you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right, listeners, I will uh, be around next week and I'll chat with you then. Bye for now. The information shared on the Real Health and Weight Loss podcast, including show notes and links, provides general information only. It is not a substitute, nor is it intended to provide individualized medical advice, diagnosis or treatment, nor can it be construed as such. Please consult your doctor for any medical concerns.